everything we've done has led up to right now. Right now. Because legacy are full of legends. You can become a legend today, boys. Put your stamp on history. Put your stamp on a legacy. It is going to take all of us, all of us, men, be not afraid. Do not be afraid to be a legend. Welcome to OPA Podcast, Episode 9. In today's episode, um, your hosts are myself, Jason O. Griffin Most, Laurens, we miss you. Uh, Wyatt Okers, Laurens, we miss you dearly. Yep, so our other host, Laurens Guider, isn't here tonight. Um, he's right now out of town for a speech conference uh, when we're all rooting for him to do well and his team. Absolutely. So, um, so Laurens, keep rowing that boat and change your best down there. I don't know where. Where, where, where is this at? Is it it California? Cali? I thought it was Cali. Somewhere. I think this one's California. I think they already did it. Alabama. I think he's out of Roll Tide country now. <laughs> Alabama! <laughs> That's the one he cared about. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, moving on. So we're going to do a Go for Sports recap. It's not going to be quick, um, it's going to be in depth here. So, first is men's hockey. Uh, they finished 18, 16, and 4 overall, 11, 10, and 3, uh, with 36 points, finishing third in the Big Ten. Um, why it's laughing? <laughs> what a joke! Um, they lost to Notre Dame two to one in overtime in the semifinals for the Big Ten tournament due to some questionable calls. Um, questionable is an understatement. Yeah, actually, that game was the first time I saw Coach Moscow pissed. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. I'd never seen him pissed ever. Hmm. <laughs> um. So a big thing about men's hockey is that they're losing our largest senior class, I think up to nine seniors, along with junior goalie Matt Robson to the Minnesota Wild and junior forward Rem Pitlick to the Nashville Predators. Rooting for him in the that's, playoffs. Uh, that's not the worst thing in the world to lose no. a bunch of seniors. No. Robson and Pitlick are going to be big losses. but In terms of recruiting, we have three goalies coming in, two from Canada, one from, I think, Eden Prairie um, oh, really? in state. Uh, they're like the top players from their prospective classes, but still we, we don't know until like they actually play it. Um, so we, we basically that. need to replace all our goalies anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but then we got all the first team Minnesota players recruits as well. So we got, we plucked them away from UMD and St. Cloud luckily. Uh, and then our home ice schedule is going to be very tough because we're facing all of our old WCHA opponents. So North Dakota, UMD, St. Cloud, Mankato, uh, of course, Wisconsin and Ohio State. Am I missing anything else? Uh, congrats to the dogs for winning. Just yeah. Keeping it in Minnesota. Congrats, Bulldogs. Like yeah, good work. I like it. Then women's hockey finished 32-6-1 overall with a 19-4-1 with 58 points, being your WCHA regular season champions. Uh, they sadly lost to freaking number one Wisconsin in both the WCHA tournament and the national championship. <laughs> and I was there for that. It sucked losing two to zero in connecticut it was a fun trip though but i was disappointed on the way home man i'm hurt i'm genuinely hurt that wisconsin took it from us we still have the axe so (laughs) we'll keep the axe for now next up men's basketball finished 22 and 14 overall 9 11 uh seventh in the big 10 um made it to i think the second round of the ncaa tournament um we were, we were supposed to lose a Louisville first round. Murph, yeah, but Murph had other plans. Murph definitely had other plans. Uh, Murph had other plans. Talk about uh, Gabe Kalsher. In the first hitting, game. Heating threes from everywhere. He, hey, give credit to Murph. He made a couple threes as well. Murph made a couple threes. Think Coffee, he's 100%. Made, Coffee made a handful of threes. We were uh, out of our element but playing very well. Which this is a fun game to watch. It was a fun game to watch. Um, uh, the Michigan State game was not as fun. Nope. Uh, then women's basketball finished 21 and 11 overall, 9 and 9 in the Big Ten, sixth place. Um, they went to the NIT. Uh, they got out, knocked down the second or third round. Second, second round. round, I think, to Cincinnati. Yeah, we had like we blew a lead pretty much. Yeah. Like in typical yeah. Gophers fashion. Um, but Kenesha Bell got drafted by. The Lynx. Minnesota Lynx. So congrats to Kenesha and, you know, following the footsteps of Minnesota players going to the Lynx. 
Um, baseball, uh, I don't have their record right now, but they're not doing great. I think it's 14 or 18 overall at the at last I checked. Yeah, they're around 500, but uh, they won yesterday 5-4 to four against Illinois. They were down 4-1 to one and uh, pulled all off we, the dub. All we so. really need to do is play well in the Big Ten. That's yep. true. No, no baseball team's going to be perfect. Yeah. Uh, softball is doing amazing. Softball's always amazing. And then volleyball, um, they ended a really good season, but uh, Hugh got a contract extension, and they're finally upgrading the facilities for the PAV. Um, and Williams Arena. And Williams. Do you know what the upgrades entail, Griff? Uh, not 100% sure yet, but hey, does I it, think it's concourses. and. Does it include AC? I think it does. <sighs> Thank God. <laughs> We need it so bad. <laughs> Next up, gymnastics. Um, men's and women's were both doing great as usual for non-rev sports. And uh, men's and women's, I think, are wrapping up their respective NCAA titles and championships and such. You got something? No, I'm just looking. Of all okay. the world words to spell wrong in that search arena. And then wrestling. Um, <laughs> Minnesota had a really great regular season, but just fell short during the Big Ten tournament and uh, NCAA tournaments um, following. Just it was hard to watch because like Stephen Gable was such a good um, athlete. Breaking our old coach or our current coach's records, which is pretty impressive. Yeah. All right, and that's all for your current Go for Sports recap. Um, now, next segment, we're going to recap the Maroon versus Gold Spring Game of 2019. Oh, yeah, give me them stats. Uh, we'll start with scoring plays. So first quarter, with four minutes and 36 seconds left on the clock, Maroon, uh, Zach Angstead, 31-yard touchdown pass to tight end Bryce Witham. Redshirt Jr. Nice. Tight end? Yes. What's that position? <laughs> I know, right? Next up. Second quarter, 14 minutes and 43 seconds. So this like maybe 13 seconds into the second quarter. Daniel Falele, offensive lineman, six yard, seven yard uh, rush for a touchdown. Um, I better see a package with him later this year. <laughs> you have a name for it yet? Some Aussie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta you gotta look to Australia for that. Next up, uh, second quarter again, 10 minutes, 32 seconds. Left on the clock. Goal scores with Tanner Morgan, 12-yard touchdown pass to Chris Oppen Bell, um, which PJ had to uh, run to the Big Ten booth, Big Ten Network booth, and review it to see if his feet stayed in balance or not. Yeah, he had that, that was some uh, good toe taps. Yep, the crap, Chris Oppen Bell. All right, um, second quarter again. Six minutes, and, six minutes and 50 seconds left on the clock. Maroon, Mohamed Ibrahim, one-yard touchdown rush. Second quarter again, 56 seconds left before halftime. Uh, defensive back, uh, Rush. Was Thomas Rush. Thomas Rush, 71-yard um, interception return for a touchdown, picking off Tanner Morgan. Then after that, halftime. Then third quarter, 8 minutes and 34 seconds. Uh, Maroon, uh, Brock Walker, kicker, uh, kicking a 22-yard field goal. And then again, third quarter, five minutes and nine seconds left for gold. Tanner Morgan, 19 yard touchdown pass to Brevin Spanford. Again, another tight end? He's a big body, so if, as long as you put it in the vicinity, he's going <clears> to <throat> come down with it. Tight end is a myth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then last for the third quarter is a minute 53 left. Maroon, um, running back, Preston Jelen, one yard touchdown rush. Preston Jelen's also a walk on, isn't he? I believe so, yeah, from Prior, <coughs> Prior Lake. Okay. So he's, he's a local kid, too. And then last scoring play we had left of the game was fourth quarter, 13 minutes and 43 seconds with gold. Uh, Cole Kramer, uh, true, uh, one of our early enrollee freshmen, 16-yard uh, touchdown pass to Brevin Spanford as well. Brevin. And the game ended Maroon winning 38-20, to 20, winning Goldie's Cup from gold last year because gold won it last year, I believe. Uh, whatever. Did they win it? I thought... I thought. I don't remember. Gold won last, last year, year. with oh, Rodney Smith. Oh, okay. It was 24-20. I just couldn't remember who won. Rodney yeah. Smith. <laughs> Rodney. <clears throat> All right, so what do you want to talk about from the spring game besides uh, the stat lines and what we saw? So I think it's pr 
pretty obvious that the QB jobs between Zach and Tanner and that Zach outplayed Tanner in this you know specific scrimmage. Zach looked yeah, I was gonna say, take a lot the, more poised. Take this scrimmage with a grain of salt because it's two teams playing each other that know what the other team is gonna do. Right. But uh, I'm not trying to like you know discredit Tanner for not doing a, an okay job because he he did do a good job. Um, you know, Zach Zach beat him out in this particular game. I think he should be the starter, but it's always comfortable knowing that you have a very capable backup. Because Tanner it's, was 11 of 17 with one interception. What was what was Zach? Nine of 15, 15. and one interception. Okay, so so percentage wise, very similar. Very similar. There are two guys who are going to play very similar football, and it's a splitting hairs process. Right, really. but the, the the interception I think is the difference here. With uh, Tanner made a definite. That was a very poor decision. Whereas Jordan Howden in his interception was like going to the ground, like taking it away from the receiver. Yeah. So some of those you can't, you know, can't do anything about. So mm-hmm. uh, I think everyone's excited to have Rodney Smith back. Uh, you had Falele in the end zone, had Mo in the end zone, and Tell they're all, more. all doing the wave. Uh, Preston Jellin as well. Preston Jellin yeah. as well, yep. Sorry, who did we have in the end zone? We had – Daniel, we had Daniel Falele. We had Falele. we had this Preston Jelen guy. Yeah, and we had a uh, we had who? Chris Oppen Bell. Mohammed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I love Mohammed. They're, they're all doing the Rodney wave, so they're all excited for him to come back to. How are we gonna split snaps in terms of the running back position? How There's do you split snaps? Brooks Smith. Mohammed. You've got, you got such a full stable. Seth Green. And Seth Green, too. Oh, yeah. You showed me that article about Penn State's running back core being unstoppable. What about what about this four or five running back approach that we've got here? I don't know. I but then again, we have a moving company at the offensive line now, actually, which I haven't seen in a long time. <laughs> Curtis. <laughs> it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be real fun to see how their running game develops this year. A lot, of, a lot of disguises, a lot of motion. Mm-hmm. Who knows, three running backs in the backfield and we're still going to pass it to Brevin Spann Ford because yeah. they stacked the box. I'm looking, yep. I'm looking forward to it. Let's see how creative Kirk can get. Oh, like use more like the Tyler Johnson plays he has in his playbook as well, Ty Johnson. Just run a slant <laughs> and he's gone. <laughs> uh, so two running running. backs in the backfield, Ty Johnson out wide. Who do, who do you cover more? Do you take Rodney Smith? Do you take you just, Shannon Brooks? You just do you play, take Mohammed? You just play prevent defense and keep everyone in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> See here. Um, let's talk about our early enrollee freshman uh, quarterbacks that signed in December. So we had Cole Kramer for gold and Jacob Clark for maroon. So Kramer didn't get a lot of play. Kramer, time, right? No. no. Um, he, only had he was in his fourth quarter passes. mainly. He, uh, he was two of two. Um, but from what how, – how did you describe Kramer in the pocket? Uh, hesitant. Um, little mm, – rattled. He seemed to not give up on plays, just um, he rushed to make decisions, at least in my eyes. So he decided to fix the sol- – the solution for him was more of his legs than like – Yeah, because like – he just and did not seem comfortable. That didn't go well. Then, then again, the, I think the defensive line may have got through the offensive line a little bit. So, mm-hmm. and then Jacob Clark was four of eight, so fifty percent. Um, but no. he has a slinger of an arm. Yeah, that uh, was a pass to um, Bateman. Oh, that was a beaut. That was a especially with the pressure right in his face, right there. He just like oh. lets it go with a sling. It's that six four frame, baby. So let's say we get to a point where we've got to make a decision between one of these two. Who do you take? One of these two quarterbacks. The one freshman. Of those two quarterbacks. The freshman quarterbacks. If we come down to a point where Tanner can't go and Zach can't go. Ooh. Oh, you know my, I I would really want to say, Cole Kramer because of his dual threat capabilities. 
but I might stick with Jacob Clark because we already have playmakers in the backfield. So I would um, roll with Clark as well. Are we redshirting either of these guys? Is that the plan? Yeah, I would say we redshirt both of them. Give them a year under the system, have them play on the scout team. I mean, they can still play four games if they do have to play. Like um, the likely scenario, you could probably split that even up even between both of them. Yeah, like the likelihood that we might see him play on the field is like you know if we're having like a four uh, touchdown lead. <laughs> when we're playing, uh, looking at Rutgers. you, looking at you, um, Purdue from last year. <laughs> hey, don't forget Rutgers a couple years ago. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you never know what it what might happen. Happening. No, but we remember we talked about I think a couple podcasts ago. Remember, um, like one of the art. Uh, uh, Minnesota sports writer was comparing PJ to uh, Jerry Kill, and you know how remember we talked about Jerry Kill's offense is like you know clock management, run 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 no run run pass, right. like set up everything with the run game. Jerry Kill stayed in every single football game he yeah. coached while he was here, but except, he didn't win a lot. But, but that but. same philosophy played us to a level of Rutgers, too. Which we needed a game saving field goal to move on. Which was like what, 34 to 32 was the final? Something like that. 30, 34, Something 31. Ridiculous. But Something. then there's PJs, like, we can blow you out of the water as we well. We can also get. But we can also get gashed. Yeah. But like, we're going to do the way I, how I want to do offense, which is. But do we have the axe at the end of the year, is what I'm thinking. Which we did. <laughs> at the time, we thought we wouldn't get the axe, and then we did. <laughs> really, really good question about this year. Did we have the axe at the end of the year? I think just our coaching staff this year is just going to be a lot more stable. Um, and I can we it... bring the bell home? Ooh. And the pig. Pig. Oof. And then we play for the jug. Sorry. And don't, Iowa's don't we have a bye one. week right before we play Iowa? Iowa is losing its two probably best playmakers on the offensive side of the football in its tight Noah, ends. Noah Fan and TJ Hawkinson. Which they're like first round draft picks. They're both they? projected to be first round, and that's because they are such excellent playmakers at the tight end position. Is Stanley a senior then? This year? Stanley will be a senior. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I believe but he's a red shirt senior. Okay. Right now, Iowa's issue is they need someone to step up in the shoes of either Noah Fan or TJ Hawkinson. Well, oh, they need a tight end, and, and they then, should probably find a wide also, receiver. But also, their running backs has been inconsistent. At their Which is weird because their offensive line is massive. Yeah. But, yeah, I think that's what Kirk Ferentz has to deal with at Iowa. Um, I mean, that shouldn't be hard for him, though. Yeah. Odds that one of those two tight ends finds their way to the the, the East Coast up there in uh, yeah, oh yeah. Foxborough, Massachusetts. <laughs> Highly likely. You think they follow that far? I think uh, Bill Belichick's going to like uh Or do you think Bill two. Belichick makes a move? Doesn't seem like the Patriots to me, but. We'll see. The draft is coming up soon, in a week-ish. 25th or something. What is that? Uh, like 10 a little days, over a week. 10 days, yeah. over a week. I swear to God the Vikings take an offensive lineman in the first round. If they don't, I'm going to throw a fit. I've, Actually, been, I've been hearing cornerback rumors. So wow. Like, <laughs> what a surprise. Defensive backs More defensive to backs. Mike Zimmer's system? What? No way. <laughs> well, we almost traded Everson Griffin for an offensive lineman. So. From the Browns. Ooh, I but don't, actually, as much as I love I s- Everson Griffin, right. I don't hate that. I nope. saw some mock drafts. Which there's the one there's one other position I'm okay with. If he took TJ Hawkinson at eighteen, if he's still in the clock or on the board. Because is he a better playmaker than Kyle Rudolph? Because we're not I don't think we're extending Kyle Rudolph. But we didn't even use Kyle Rudolph last year all that much. Kyle Rudolph's think... not gonna get paid. Yeah. So he's gonna be gone after his next season. Is he? He's not gonna get paid anywhere else. Who's going to pay him after some lackluster years the past handful of years? What, this is a can contract really, season for you, him? Can you really blame all of that on him, though? I mean, this season, kind of. 
Okay. Kirk was really, really good with his tight ends in Washington. Yeah. And Kyle Rudolph kind of underperformed again. He's also throwing it to Diggs and Thielen every other play. Well, that's because Diggs and Thielen are incredible wide receivers. And then there's Laquan Treadwell who always drops his damn passes. Or then the, the one unlock, the unknown of Alger Robinson in the end zone seven times. <laughs> he was, he is a great under the radar wide receiver three. He, oof, that Rams game this year. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. As Gopher fans, we're also Minnesota fans too, except for Lawrence. He's a Bears fan. No, um, but he has every right to be a Bears fan right yeah. now. I wonder how he feels about Jordan Howard getting traded for a sixth round pick. <laughs> Wait, he did? Yeah. yeah. Jordan Howard oh. got traded for nothing to Philly. To Philly. So, like a late sixth round pick. Did Not he, even a good Did Philly round lose pick. all the running backs? So, what's going yep. on? Jay Ajayi is still unsigned, actually. Um, and the other guys that were Clement injured? Clement is still there. Uh, God, who else is even in Philly? I suppose Darren Sproles is 90 at this point. <laughs> uh, Philly did add Deshaun Jackson back, so they're looking to go with the with the uh, more uh, gun approach this season. Because I hope the Bears know that this is not a strong running back class for the draft, right? <laughs> well, like, like I, I saw, said, Ajayi's pro- still on the table. Um, I saw projections where Minnesota was going to take – Nebraska's Devon Ozigbo in the seventh round. <laughs> it's not a good running back class. No. Oh, did Penn State's guy declare for the draft? No. You sure? He's still on the roster. I'm, I'm not entirely only, sure. Only, about only, that. The, only that wide receiver. Let's see. Um, I could be wrong, though. So I'll take it with a grain of salt. Really, there's not a whole lot behind Josh Jacobs in the draft in terms of running backs. So unless the Bears are taking a serious look at trading up to get him. But you do know the league is coming more passing, passing heavy than running heavy. Unless you're the Vikings. You know, Mitch the- Trubisky could just double as both a running back and a quarterback. <laughs> Mitch Trubisky should just play running back, honestly. Might as well. That was a terrible Pro Bowl. <laughs> I watched. Like, how can you miss? Was um, it Mike Evans in the, <laughs> that course? I saw the statistics on the percentage of cap space each quarterback in the league or each starting quarterback in the league takes up. Oof. Um, and in the NFC North, uh, we own the top three positions, and then there's Mitchell Trubisky. <laughs> Wait, Guess which one? Do... Which which one's which one's number one? Aaron Rodgers. No. Kirk. No. Is this Stafford. Matthew Stafford uh, takes up the most, the highest amount of cap space on the Detroit. Or How much on... is he getting paid? Oh, not as much as Cousins, but like. But I think the Lions have the, less cap space. The Detroit, though, Detroit's right? bad with their cap space. Rick Spielman is a godsend in terms of managing cap space. Along with his assistants, uh, Rob Krasinski and the other guys. They somehow got Adam Thielen a contract extension. Oh, they're going to keep. But we let Marcus Sherrills go. Man. <laughs> oh. Hey, guess where he went, though? I know where he went. Let's not bring it up. <laughs> it hurts. Hey, my boy Teddy's still there. Oh. <laughs> Teddy. Oh, so I want to bring up the Saturday Tradition article because it's this guy's knee-jerk reaction from the weekend of 10 spring games. Uh, How about we don't bring that up? Let's keep that one under the radar. (laughs) (laughs) All right, we'll mention it. Um, uh, Recruiting. Martinez is the best quarterback in the Big Ten. All right, um, let's look at recruiting for the Gophers. How are we doing for 2020? What you got, boy? You're my source on this. 202. So we are fourth in the Big Ten and 17th nationally. <laughs> I can't type. 202 go for it. <laughs> um, our lead, rec- our best recruit right now is a three star at .8778. Kai Thomas from Topica, Topica K. 
Kansas. Topeka, Kansas. I don't like this layout. What? Show me more. This is what I'm talking about. All right, pro style quarterback. Who? Oh, never mind. No, that's like top, uh, those are top recruits. Yeah, this is. I don't know. These are people that have offers. Do we have commitments already? We, we have eight hard commits right now. Oh yeah, Kai, Kai Thomas. Thomas. Yep. Run top running back out of Kansas. Then Jonathan Mann from Rosemount, Minnesota boy. Go Irish. No, no. Uh, Ethan Witt. Um, Brooklyn, New York. I like it. Uh, uh, who? Lucas Finesse is apparently going to be a really good linebacker for us. Just I talking about Justin Belletto from New, New York. Why? Yeah. He's the top New York prospect right now, too. He's the top New York prospect? Like one of the top prospects from New York. Um, then I wonder Ju if... Uh, our uh, buddy Juwan. Rick Patino <laughs> introduced uh, Fleck to that market. Uh, we, then we got Juwan Mitchell from Butler Community College, uh, JUCO, uh, three star as well. Um, CJ West from Nazareth Academy in Lagrange Park, Illinois, D tackle. And then last is Casey Collier from Barbers Hill, uh, Montevideo. He doesn't look Texas. six six three hundred. He really doesn't. Yeah, no, he doesn't. Look no, at his he picture. He doesn't look three six six three hundred at all. He doesn't look like it. Yeah, he must just be a built three hundred. Jeez, we really we must really like him. Jeez, Arkansas what? State, Louisiana Monroe, Memphis, North Texas. They must see something in this guy. Well. Yeah, the big one of those is Memphis, and that's not that good of a school. Do you think we're taking a quarterback this recruiting class? I mean, we don't need it, but, you know, depth isn't always uh, a Would I mind thing. a quarterback this draft class? Is that what you're asking? <laughs> <laughs> I would not mind at all. Um, in 2021, much. we have three hard commits the year after that. Um, we have Ethan uh Kalik Manis. And Why are we just looking at the hard commits? His brother, Dino Kalik Manis. Uh, Ethan. Oak, yeah, that's a quarterback wide receiver. Dual threat. Ethan that's is a four star saying? recruit at a point nine two nine three. Can you tell Fleck likes Illinois? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I mean, last year's draft class, it was Georgia, 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 Georgia. What's up with that? Nothing Next wrong with year's that? class is Kansas. Nothing wrong with Georgia. There's like three guys out of Kansas that have committed from next year's class. Okay, no. two guys out of Kansas, but look at look at the people who haven't committed yet, but have offers. You're still New three. Hampshire. Oh, there's three. What's up with the East Coast suddenly getting attention? Oh, those two have committed actually. We have a few quarterbacks. Two. Uh, Dual threat and pro style. <coughs> King, Longview, Texas. Getting on it. Jalen Suggs. Oh, we're losing Jalen Suggs? To who? Like, who's after him? Uh, top five choices are Georgia, Iowa, Iowa State, Michigan State, Minnesota. So, Georgia. <laughs> really, we're losing to Arkansas on a guy? Oh, that's not that great of a list, though. No. Coastal Carolina is your five. That's a problem. Man, I'm just liking this Kai Thomas. He's Illinois. He looks, he looks like a really good prospect from Illinois. Man, Illinois getting that four star. I don't get it. Well, they'll need it. Hey, was that a Texas? Which one? One without. Yeah, Texas is back. <laughs> <laughs> Tigers back. Texas isn't. Oh, this, that, I'm I'm more curious about the offensive line here. Oh yeah, show me my 2019. Oh, we tried to recruit. We just, we gave an offer to a five star offensive tackle. Of course, he commits to Ohio State. Mm, really, yeah. Ohio State? Yeah. Shot. The kid is scored oh. at point nine. What about O line? You Notre Dame. Notre Dame. Uh, I don't think they took any of our prospects yet. 
Bubble guard. Hey, Texas is back. Four-star running back. No, he's out of Georgia, though. It's fine. Ooh, we might. We're warm on a center right now. Uh, Josh Fryer from Beach Grove, Indiana. Ooh, FSU, really, man? Is this this year's class? 2019. Yeah, so people who haven't committed are... Oh, we still have more. Are we still waiting for more recruits to sign? There are a couple of people who haven't, who have offers from us who haven't committed yet. In nineteen. Oh. Weren't they supposed to sign? Um, I mean, on signing day. They don't necessarily have to, but probably hurts their chances of playing this year if they don't. Because I know one of our recruits took a gray shirt. Um, from the 2018 class, and then came in the 19s. Hey, where are we standing on Tank Bigsby? Tank Bigsby? That's a name, man. What what position? Oh, we're not even top five. Gamecocks. What position? Is that South Carolina? Running back. Yeah, it's South Carolina. Georgia, Alabama. George. Why would you take South Carolina over no, Georgia, over Georgia and Alabama? What's that fifth one? Hold on, who was that? The New Mexico State. No, no way. Are you joking? I don't know. It looks like it. Please don't let it be. It looks like Colonel Sanders. (laughs) (laughs) He's getting recruited by KFC. They won't even show us. Eastern Kentucky. They must love their fried chicken. Oh my god, figure out what their mascot is. <laughs> Please tell us why. Please tell us. I'm I'm doing it. I'm figuring it out. Eastern Google Kentucky man. has no signed 2020 football commits. LOL. None never signed. Wow. Eastern Kentucky. Who wants to go to Eastern Kentucky? Colonels. Hence why he looks like Colonel Sanders. <laughs> Jason, you gotta put a picture of that on the video. What picture? Show, show me on. on let phone. me let me see if I can pull up the, the logo. <laughs> Here we go. Search for that. I apologize for our listeners. This is a very <coughs> low key uh, podcast. Today. This is uh, the Eastern Kentucky Colonel. That legit looks like Colonel that Sanders. That is Colonel Sanders. I kid you not. <laughs> but with long lush put, hair. Put a video, put a picture on the video. Should be Just right here. Yeah, right here-ish. Who is it? Colonel. Hello. You're good. Say hi to the podcast. Daniel. All right. Um, yeah, a lot of, lot of good, strong three-star recruits. The occasional four stars. We need to put in more four stars. You know, we do, but I'm not concerned right now because we can build these three oh, stars. Oh, look at that. Look great. at those first couple. Mm-hmm. Oh, isn't that beautiful? <laughs> those names. Oh, well, look at that one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, who is it? Where is he playing now? Nick Gramantes. Oh, don't who remind me. Who even cares? Don't remind me of that guy. Isn't he in Nebraska? Did they? Uh, where oh, is he at? UNLV, now? I think. No, wait. He signed with UNLV. Playing linebacker, linebacker correct? Inside linebacker, yeah. And they still show him in a go for quarterback uniform. Oh, well, Get Vic. out of here. What? Sorry, that was my Apple Watch. <laughs> yep, so. These kids. So we have pretty strong three stars, right, then, for Very recruiting. strong three stars. We have four stars in Who's different the top categories. Three stars? Uh, oh, this is time. last year's, though. Oh, I know. Yeah, I'm looking at 2018. Yeah. Bring me to 2019. Where's our recruiting class ranked nationally? We're ranked 10th in the Big Ten. Isn't that crazy? But you also forget. Who's ahead of us? You also forget that we Who's had, behind us, we actually? We had a long snapper as a two-star that brought our ranking down. Michigan, Penn, okay, yeah. Okay. Uh, Nebraska, We're creeping up enough. on Iowa, though. Indiana, Really? They beat us in recruiting. Indiana class. has the eighth recruiting class in the Big Ten. Purdue, Purdue doesn't surprise it's so me. In the crazy top five. Because 
if Wisconsin doesn't have that four or five star QB, they drop. A whole lot, yeah. A whole lot. Okay, so Maryland's behind us. North we- Northwestern's still behind us? Hey, yeah. look who's in the last place. Rutgers. <laughs> they have no right to be. Illinois' class is only 14 oh. commitments. Griff, you missed yeah. this. Uh, Why and I were talking, there was another article. Um, oh, Rutgers God. president okay. um, was still supporting Chris Ash, but he says 1 and 11 is not acceptable. Well, I, I wouldn't think so. One in eleven is perfectly acceptable if you're Rutgers. <laughs> so yeah, I think their administration is holding, still holding on to him, but like I think their fans are not. But like, who wants that job? Someone who's trying to break in. You literally <laughs> got to look for a new guy. Wait, would you fire Chris Ash now, or you wait till like after the season? No, you got to wait till after the season. At this point, it's too late. Yeah, you can't you can't screw up. Yeah, you, spring ball after like game twelve, you mu- you fire him on the field after game twelve if he doesn't deliver more than one win. Or in the locker room. Really, you think more than one? You give him another chance if he makes more than one win. If he if he gets, do you think if he gets two wins, it's gonna be? What's their schedule next season? Wait, hold on. Yeah, tell me who they play to start the season. I hope it's Ohio State, Michigan. <laughs> their first game is against UMass. <laughs> Okay, so that should be a win. Boston College. That's actually probably a loss. Uh, Iowa. They, they play uh, a Big Ten team during non-conference. Okay. Yeah. And then Michigan. Michigan. Yep. Maryland. Loss. Indiana. Loss. Us. Loss. Liberty. Loss. Li- Wait, Liberty University? Loss. <laughs> <laughs> it's Rutgers. <laughs> Expectations are too high. Illinois. Win. <laughs> <laughs> Ohio State. That's a fat L. Michigan State. Rocky Lombardi's taking them all away. <laughs> and then Penn State's the last game. If, he, if, he, if Chris Ash doesn't deliver at least three wins, he's out. Oh, yeah, for sure. <clears throat> you should be beating UMass. No. Promote the student manager. You should be beating the fuck out of UMass. UMass got kicked out of the MAC because they weren't good enough to play in the MAC. UMass is an independent in FBS play. You should be absolutely obliterating Liberty. They're an FCS school. And Liberty? Yeah, you, you said that right. Yeah, you should be absolutely so they should obliterating be, they Liberty. They should be at least be 2-1 and one in non-conference. Yeah, they do have Boston Boston College, and that's a that's a bold choice. Unless Rutgers goes Big Ten, the old Big Ten style, and just runs the ball on them like we did with Georgia Tech, <laughs> um, to somehow wins. But Boston College doesn't play the same as a lot of ACCs. They like they play similar, but they're not exactly the same as most other ACC schools are. Pitt's the one that really doesn't fit in with the ACC, but like we'll save my opinion there. <laughs> So yeah, an earlier and later episode of this podcast. So we're all saying Rutgers is not going to be bowl eligible. Uh, Rutgers <laughs> is not going to be bowl eligible, but like you should be lo- for a very long time. If you can't get a win in the Big Ten this year, you're out. If you can't build a team around a four-star quarterback, you're done. Who was supposed to be better than our quarterback named Zach Annex? If you can't beat Illinois, you're out. They won't want Facts. us. Didn't we lose Illinois? But, like, if Rutgers can't beat okay. Illinois this year, a year where Illinois, we don't – does Illinois – who's Illinois' quarterback? Look it up. Is it – A.J. Bush gone? A.J. Bush gone. Great. Great. That's what I understood. Great. 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 So I think they're trying to get a transfer quarterback into – their mitts. Where's their Pulls roster? Up. Just look up Illinois quarterback it's roster. It's not here. Or Illinois. Yeah, it's not here. It's 2018. Well, maybe oh, there's a 2019 spring football roster farther down on that same page. That's Illinois College. Close enough. Probably. MJ Rivers? Oh, yeah, it might be MJ Rivers. But he got hurt 
a few times last season too because he has split time with A.J. Bush. Ooh, Frisco, Texas. You got two redshirt freshmen. You got Man, the you sophomore. Just, you got You could just join junior. NDSU and go back to Frisco every year. <laughs> Matt Robinson. You might be looking at Matt Robinson as well. Redshirt freshman? You might be looking at a redshirt freshman, Matt Robinson, um, Corin Taylor. We still got to be dealing with Reggie You're not going to see Cam Miller at this point. It's too late. We still got to deal with Reggie Corbin at running back. Yeah, yeah but, but like, Joe Rossi's ready. True. When you don't even have a quarterback that you're even a little bit excited about. Like last year, the Gophers had – Two quarterbacks that we were at least a little bit excited about coming into the season. Because they show so much promise in non-conference play. But, like, is there a quarterback on that roster that they're excited about in Illinois? According to this guy's knee-jerk reaction, Illinois' offense might be the worst in the conference. There really wasn't a good way to spin this, unless you want to say the Illini will have the best defense in the conference, I guess. Um. Cool. From this article. <laughs> Rutgers still might have the worst offense in the conference. They will have the worst offense in the conference. So we'll say this. If Chris Ash loses to Illinois, he's done. If Chris Ash loses Cut. to Illinois, that's his that's his best chance at a win. In terms of Big Ten wins, that is his best chance. Maybe Indiana is possible. Indiana always seems to disappoint. True. Despite and pulling in the number eight recruiting class in the Big Ten, they're going to disappoint. They will. But if Rutgers can't pull off one of those wins, Chris Ash has to go. So then, you, then from there, they're going to hire some no-name coach we never heard they're of. They're going to have to. No one's going to want to take on Rutgers. Where, who are you going to get to take Rutgers? Unless someone gets fired. The Rutgers, the Rutgers job is a platform for when you – to get coaching experience and then go somewhere else. Exactly. That's how everyone looks at Rutgers. What? No one PJ wants – was there. No one wants it permanently. PJ was there with Greg Schiano, Bounced. What Rutgers needs – is Rutgers needs a big name to get himself in trouble. What do you mean by trouble? Rutgers the- needs – oh, gosh, who's the guy who's coaching? Coaching who? Who's he coaching now? Is he college football or still – He used to coach LSU, USC. Lane Kiffin. They need a Lane Kiffin where he just – Kind of falls off the face of the earth for a couple of years, and now he's coaching FAU. <laughs> <laughs> they need something like that to happen in order to get like a quality football coach in there. Because Lane Kiffin's not a bad football coach. He's put up some impressive performances with FAU, and they're not a good football team. No. So by Chris Ash and Lane Kiffin. <laughs> We don't know. We don't know. Lane what's going Kiffin their would minds. be a fool to take on the Rutgers job, because <laughs> uh, you know FAU is not a good football team. They could beat Rutgers. Just about anybody could beat Rutgers right now. It's just been a hot takes fest right now, right? <laughs> is, is it really a hot take to say that Rutgers football is terrible? It's really not. That's just facts. <laughs> okay, you guys have any hot takes then? Oh, boy. Besides, like you know, what we just talked about with the Vikings and. Quarterbacks. Oh, I've got so many NFL hot takes right now. Oh, how'd you feel about the AAF dying in three um, weeks? I mean, who's hey, surprised, though? did you see Ovechkin get in a fight with uh, – God, I don't even know the kid's name on the Hurricanes. But last night he got in a fight and he just absolutely beat the crap out of the kid. Yeah, that made me feel better about what happened in the AAF. <laughs> <laughs> Got just knocked out cold on the ice. I think the Vikings signed at least four AF players. Northwestern plays UMass, too. That's because UMass has to dig for games. Northwestern plays Stanford. Ooh. Really? Ouch. When? Second or first game? First game. 
Really? Oh. Who's got the hardest non-conference or yeah non-conference slate in the Big Ten? Well, we have a cakewalk of a non-conference. Well, it's not us. Fresno State is Fresno State's strongest. gonna be all right, but it's not us because it's not the same team from last season. Northwestern has Stanford, but they also have UMass and UNLV. But they also lose Clayton Thorson. Yeah, but they have their only like real game there is Stanford. Right. That's better than Rutgers. They have a harder non-conference slate than Rutgers by far and away. Northwestern? Yeah. They play Stanford and UNLV as opposed to Boston College and Liberty. Mm-hmm. Which of those two duos sounds like a better football team? Who's Purdue got? Nevada, Vanderbilt, TCU. I TCU. Like that. Ooh, they've actually got a pretty tough one. Who? Purdue. Their yeah. easiest game is going to be Nevada. Oh, really? I'd say my hot takes, uh, unless per- Vanderbilt's Purdue not and Northwestern don't get – Six wins. That's a, that's your hot take? Hold on. Let me look at this. <sighs> mm. Yeah, that's that's a little bit spicy. Purdue's got some for um, sure wins, but they've got a lot of toss ups too. I say L L. You gotta pick seven. Who are seven, produced seven losses? Oh, seven losses. Let's see. We can always throw in a spicy non-conference loss. Uh, the spicy non-conference loss is, well, TCU is not that spicy, really. No. Mm. Minnesota wins. Well, I can tell you what, they go two and three. We're talking about how many losses they're going to get, right? We're P- Purdue not getting six wins. Who are their seven losses? So Vanderbilt, TCU. You think Vanderbilt's a, like an easy loss? I think it's going to be like goal line situation. Vanderbilt's going to get a field goal mm-hmm. or a touchdown. Tell you what, I'll take TCU, but I won't give you Vanderbilt. You won't? Okay. Okay. Vanderbilt's not a good football It'll team. We'll keep TCU, us, obviously. Who is Vanderbilt better than the SEC? No one. Arkansas. Um, and that's because Arkansas is... Penn State. The worst it's ever been. Penn State and Happy Valley. Pe- well, yeah. Pe- well, TCU, Penn State. Um, Nebraska. I'll take Nebraska. They did lose to I, Eastern Michigan. I mean, yeah, but... I would say Hoosiers because I think the Hoosiers are sick of like losing in the last game of the season. I'll give it to the oh, Hoosiers. Oh, that's rough. They'll get six wins, but they. Third week is their bye week. Penn State. Oh, wait, no. Our bye week is before Penn State, Iowa, North Purdue gets a bye week going into our game. That's not something I like at all. I like it for us, but we also get the bye. That's not good for them either. Because we also get a bye before Penn State. So. No, Purdue. Oh, Purdue? Yeah, Purdue's bye week. Goes into oh they have an early buy, they have a th- week Third four buy. Oh that's super early, Rip. and we don't play well at Ross Aid. So, but unless somehow like we just scare the crap out of Elijah Sindelar. <laughs> I don't think I don't think Purdue's O line has gotten any better from last year. To they, this didn't, year. they didn't take pull up any Illinois o- schedule. Pull up Illinois. I don't think they took any in the last recruiting class because O line you and <laughs> Indiana took them. O line you so. Illinois, the first game was Akron. All right. Then UConn Huskies. All right. Eastern Michigan, non conference slate. After that, their first game of the season is the Huskers. Oh, that's just their non conference schedule. And then they're off week five. Then it's us, Michigan, Badgers, uh, Purdue, Butkers, Michigan State. Um, they have another bye? What? Iowa and Northwestern. Wait. No, we no we all, everyone always has a off week. Then I misread something here. No, that's normal. Yeah, that's pretty normal. Oh. oh. Right. Um. Oh. Illinois might be a one-win team. You think so? Oh uh, no, they're a two-win team. I forgot about UConn. 
Even Rutgers could beat UConn. UConn's not good right now. Nice. No, I'll, I'll give them the dub against Eastern Eastern Michigan. I think they could take the dub against either of the MAC teams, One, but like. Two. You also forget that we took a UConn three. kicker too. I give them three wins. Feeling generous. To who? Like who are the wins? UConn, East. Eastern Michigan, Rutgers. I think UConn and Rutgers might be it. Wins are going to be hard Remember to come by. Remember when Akron beat Illinois. Northwestern at home? <laughs> hey, pull up Northwestern schedule again. Northwestern? Yeah. I'm just looking for somewhere for there to be a hot take in terms of schedule. Non-conference, Stanford. Okay, Stanford. Uh, UNLV. Mm-hmm. Then Michigan State. Badgers. Cornhuskers. By. Oh, that's a tough stretch. Buckeyes, Hawkeyes, Hoosiers, Boilermakers, UMass, us, and the Illini. That's Want a hot take? What's your hot take? Northwestern doesn't get six wins. Oh! What, 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 what did I say? I just said that. <laughs> uh, Purdue's getting six wins. Check bud. out this stretch for Northwestern. Michigan State, Wisconsin, Nebraska, Ohio State, Iowa Hawkeyes. They have... They have a bye week in the middle of it, but th- that's still not going to help them. That's at least – that's probably four losses right there. One, two. They they could sneak out a win with Michigan State, Nebraska, or Iowa, but they probably lose four of those five games. They win five. Well, yeah, they beat UMass. They'll beat us they, because we they can't beat play They beat Indiana. Well. They beat Illinois. We cannot play in Evanston. Okay, our team was completely different Hold two on. years ago. Hold True. on. Uh, you, you want an even better hot take? Go for it. UMass uh, doesn't we, win the game? <laughs> we 100% beat Northwestern. At Ryan Field. At Ryan Field. Michigan State, Wisconsin, Nebraska, Ohio State, Iowa, Indiana, Purdue, UMass, Minnesota. They win maybe three games in that stretch. Maybe. Maybe. Mm. My confidence is still not great with Ryan Field right now. I still get and bad memories about that. Even better. Our play calling was we, so bland in those games. We, we are so the bland. loss that keeps Northwestern from winning six games. We are loss number seven. I like it. All right, we'll take it. Um, what does well, Nebraska's schedule look like this year? Um, <laughs> South Alabama, <laughs> Colorado. Ooh, they get to play Colorado. That's a fun one. Uh, Northern Illinois. <laughs> Mac represent. After that, Illinois, Ohio State, Northwestern, okay. us. That's not a terrible start at all. By uh, Hoosiers, Purdue, Badgers, Maryland, and Iowa. Oof. Um, their last three games are going to be tough. You want a hot take? You want another if, hot take? If they win six, it's in their first nine games. Nebraska's barely going to sneak into a bowl game. People like Nebraska so much right now. Nebraska's just barely going to get the six. They need to fix their defense. It's not going to feel like that. They need to fix their defense. And I agree with Griff. Did you see their recruiting class? They're all their top prospects for offensive play. Playmakers. They're gonna be what? They're gonna be probably six. Yeah, they're gonna be six and three going in those last three games. Mm-hmm. Got any more hot takes? And so it's not gonna feel like they're. You wanna know Wisconsin schedule? What is Wisconsin? Who does Wisconsin play on conference? USF. That's actually not the then, hard, the easiest game. Then Central Michigan. Fire up chips. Fire up. After that, um, Michigan, Northwestern, Kent State, um, Michigan State, Illinois, Ohio State, by Iowa, Nebraska, Purdue, and then us at, at the last game of the season. That's a decent schedule. They're probably an eight-win team this year. Who would you say their losses would be? Michigan, Michigan. Ohio State, us. Uh, We're keeping the damn axe. <laughs> Nebraska. And that's it? Purdue. You think Nebraska's got Wisconsin? 
at Memorial. Oh, I'm just saying. <laughs> you have a point, but <laughs> just playing devil's advocate over here. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's it could go either way. But Nebraska's a tough game for them. We're not just going to give it up without a fight. No. Um, Sean, Jonathan Taylor wants revenge, but I don't think we're going to give it to him. Uh, they got they get Iowa at Camp Randall, which is going to suck for Iowa. But, like, they're going to have a hard time with us and Nebraska. Yeah. Wisconsin's an eight-win team. Actually, Wisconsin wins the West. You want my hot take? But Kent State beats Wisconsin and Camp Randall. Kent State isn't the best team that they play non-conference. I know that. South Florida is the best team they I play non-conference by far. I just want their fan base to go into the Kent State protocol. Ooh. <laughs> and they play them at Raymond James. That is not ideal for Wisconsin. Who does Michigan get this year? Michigan? Can Middle you pull ten- up Ohio State, Middle actually? Middle Tennessee, I like that. I like that a lot, actually. Middle Tennessee? Um, Army, yeah, Wisconsin, Rutgers, Iowa, Illinois. That's ooh, Notre Dame. Notre Dame's gonna be big. I love that. Oh, that's gonna be a fun game. Yeah, what? Who does Ohio State play this year? Florida, Florida Atlantic, Cincinnati, Indiana, Miami, Ohio, Nebraska, Michigan State, uh, Northwestern, wow. Wisconsin. They get a nice break in the middle. Good, good job, NCAA. <sighs> And then Maryland, Rutgers, Penn State, and then they close out with Michigan. Oh, jeez. Ohio State's going to win the East. Again. Easily. Yeah, I can see it's that. Gonna be, it's going to be a two-game gap between them and Michigan. Assuming Ohio State beats their non-conference opponents. They will. And then There's nothing to be afraid of and then there. Then they can beat Indiana. They Ohio can beat, State's bowl eligible in their first six games. Unless Michigan State shocks them. But quick note, no. Ohio, play, Ohio State's Depends playing Nebraska State in Memorial. But Wyatt, Ohio State's playing in Nebraska at Memorial. Oh. No. They've got nothing to be afraid of. Ohio State has nothing to be afraid of because you know who the best quarterback in the Big Ten is? It ain't Adrian Martinez. You think it's JF? I think it's JF. You really think it's him? Whoever starts for Ohio State is the best quarterback in the Big Ten. Okay, I can take that. Adrian Martinez is a sophomore. Adrian Martinez, when he's a senior, unquestionably the best quarterback in the Big Ten. But it's not now. Unless Ohio State pulls in some miracle worker. Not that I can see at the moment. <laughs> Ooh, Penn State, that was an accident. Idaho Vandals, duh. Buffalo Bulls. Uh, Buffalo came off a 10 win season. Hey, you know who uh, Penn State's first loss is going to be to? Pitt. Whoo! Pitt. Oh, man. That's this not is... bad. It's not bad at all. Ooh. Penn State's going to be ball eligible, but it's going to be a little bit tighter than they want it to be. I'll get. I'll tell you that right now. Is that going to be the last hot take? We got to wrap this up. Who's Michigan State got? Show me Michigan State. <laughs> last up, Michigan State. I just want to see what the. E- I want to see what the East is up to this year. Tulsa, Western Michigan. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Michigan State's going to lose their third game of the year, too. Wait, is this Sun Devils? There are going to be so many (laughs) non-conference losses on the Big Ten this year. (laughs) Did they lose to the Sun Devils last season? The Big Ten is – yeah, they lost to the Sun Devils in their – I believe in their bowl game. Was it the bowl game? Was it – Right? Am I crazy? I I thought it was regular season. Oh, no. Oregon was their bowl game, wasn't it? Yeah. They when did they Sun- play Arizona State? Third game of the season, non-conference last season, at Arizona State. Oh, Michigan State? And they lost badly. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, they got beat 16-13 last year. Yeah, but it, it was a bad loss. Yeah, it was bad. It was ugly. The second game. There are going to be... Oh, God, Michigan State's getting screwed here. They get wrecked by Ohio State. They get wrecked by Wisconsin. 
and then they, they get they, a, they try and heal for a week. They, they take a week off to think about it, and then they, they lose. They get to, wrecked by Penn State. They get another week off, and then I say, you know what? They lose to Illinois. They don't lose to <laughs> No one's going to lose to Illinois. Losing to problems. Illinois. And then they just get reamed by Michigan. And then they lose to Rutgers. And then, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Michigan State. If Michigan State is Rutgers' Big Ten win, don't at us. <laughs> well, that wraps hey, up. Hey, when does Rutgers play Ohio State? <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> Who does Ohio State come off of playing Rutgers? Hey, Rutgers, three games before Ohio State, Minnesota, Liberty, Illinois. Oh, but actually, let's throw in Indiana before that. Indiana, Minnesota, Liberty, Illinois. Let's say they, cu- they get a fluke win here and they win those other three games. Who does Ohio State have to play before they play Rutgers? Is Ohio State 8-0 before they play Rutgers? Absolutely. Let's see. I'm going to start looking at flights to New Piscataway. <laughs> Please do. Let's see. Road trip to New Piscataway, you want? Oh. Yeah, you, can, you can fly into Trenton pretty cheap. You Wait, know. do we play them at Rutgers this year? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep, we play them at New Piscataway. Man, what's up with that? Because they played here. Yeah, but, like, they're Rutgers. They don't get to not play here. They need every advantage they can get. They have to play away from Piscataway every single week. It's okay. Week they won't have any fans there game. anyway. It's not like it's going to help them. Oh, so we get to just fill the stadium? Yeah. Uh, marching band trip to New Piscataway. Honestly, let's just do it. I've heard a lot of rumors that you, that the marching band's going to Iowa. Ooh. No. Send them to Rutgers. Ooh. When was that? You know how funny it would be if there was 320 people in the stadium and they were all the marching band? Saturday. <laughs> uh, let's see, what day was that? No, you mean 320 plus extra staff? Hey, is this a, speaking of the, the Liberty Flames, is this a Liberty Flames hat? No, it's a Disney hat. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing. Which has the Nike swoosh on it to rep our brand. Uh, the Salt Lake Screaming Eagles and the Liberty Flames are the exact same thing. <laughs> For anybody who knows what the Salt Lake Screaming Eagles are. Wait, what are we looking Props. at? We're looking at flights to Piscataway. We're Dude, flying. we gotta wrap this up. <laughs> nah, nah. We're gonna spend another hour on this podcast. It's all gonna be looking at flights to Piscataway. Well, while we're having fun looking at flights, I'd like to thank all of our listeners for today. Sorry it's a little more mellow than usual about Laurent's, but... Sorry I'm not as loud as LeRon's is what he's saying. We hope um, we gave you some good insights of what the spring game went and how uh, we look forward to next season in the Big Ten and for the Gophers. But um, from, not, from this point on, we're going to be on a huge hiatus until next season in August when we do another recap of uh, in, like you know preseason stuff. And we're not doing asthma, boy. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so stay tuned uh, for the future. But we'll be off for the next few months and through the summer until – Football season returns. So, my name is Jason. I'm Wyatt. This is Griff. He's busy looking at flights to Piscataway, New Jersey. And we'll see you guys next time.